this is concept e classes and today we deal with chapter 13 of class 8 science sound part 1 so we'll be covering this chapter in two parts in part 1 we'll see how sound is produced sound is produced by a vibrating body we'll also see how sound is produced by humans and how sounds needs a medium for propagation and finally in this part 1 we'll see how we can hear sound through our ears the rest of this topics will be discussed in part 2 of chapter 13 we hear a variety of sounds in our surrounding for example the sound of a dog barking or when we try ringing a bell or play musical instruments we can hear sound similarly if we see this man he when he blows a whistle we can hear sound when the fire crackers burst or when it rains we can see that sound is there so in short we can say that sound plays a very important role in our lives so let's deal more about sound in this chapter now let's see how sound is produced so the first topic of this chapter is sound is produced by a vibrating body now what is sound it is a form of energy and it is created when an object vibrates and it send the waves of energy into our ears that is we can say that sound is a form of energy which is produced when an object vibrates and when an object vibrates sound waves are formed and when this waves of energy or vibration reaches our ear we are able to hear the sound now we learn more about waves and amplitude uh, in the part 2 of this chapter now we simply just have to understand that sound is created when an object vibrates or we can say that vibrating objects produces sound now what do you mean by vibration the two and fourth or back and forth motion of an object is called as vibration for example here when we hit a drum here we can notice that there is a two and fourth motion this motion of an object is termed as vibration now when we play a guitar what happens here the strings vibrate and as they vibrate they produces sound now let's see how this vibration produces sound when an object vibrates it causes the particle of the surrounding medium to vibrate that is here when we play a guitar the surrounding medium is the air what happens the particles in the air are forced to vibrate and then it causes the neighboring particles to vibrate as well it is here the vibrating object when it vibrates the particles of the surrounding medium vibrate and they start colliding with each other and they collide with the neighboring particles and they keep on continuing till the vibration reaches our ear and when it reaches our ear we are able to hear the sound of the vibrating object but if we are far from the source or from the vibrating object the energy of the particles which they collide with each other they become feeble or become weak hence if you are very far away from the source the sound also becomes weak now the next question that comes to mind is do all vibrating objects produce sound yes all vibrating objects produce sound but in some cases the vibrations are easily visible to us for example if we strike a metal a uh, pan with a stick we are able to see the vibration but in most cases the vibration is not visible that is due to the amplitude if the amplitude is less we might not be able to see the vibrations but we can feel the vibration for example here if this guy is playing a big guitar here we can we know that the vibrate the string vibrates but we are not able to see them but if you place a hand on the body of the guitar we can feel the vibrations so from this slide we can understand that sound is produced when an object vibrates now let's see how sound is produced by humans in humans the sound is produced by the voice box or the larynx if you place your fingers on the throat and if you try swallowing your saliva we can find a hard lump that seems to move when you swallow it this part of the body is called as voice box or it is also called as larynx and it is situated at the upper end of the windpipe so this is the front view and this is the top view and there are two vocal cords that are stretched across the voice box that is there are two vocal cords that are attached to the larynx 
there is a narrow slit between the two vocal cords for the passage of air. When the lungs force the air through the slit, the vocal cords vibrate to produce sound. That is, for example, if you are trying to speak, the vocal cords they come together and leaving a very narrow gap. Now, the lungs force the air, or when the air is exhaled, it forces the vocal cords to vibrate, there as to produce some sound. Now, if you are not speaking, the vocal cords would be apart from each other. Now, muscles attached to the vocal cords can make the cords tight or loose. So, if the vocal cords are tight and thin, the type or the quality of voice is different from that when they are loose and thick. Now, let's see the length of the vocal cords. The vocal cords in men are about 20 mm long and in women, they are about 15 mm long. Children have very short vocal cords. As men have a much more longer vocal cords, they have a heavy voice. Whereas children and women, they have shrill voice due to shorter vocal cords. This is the reason why the voices of men, women and children are different. The next topic of this chapter is sound needs a medium for propagation. That is sound needs a medium to travel. It can travel through solids, liquids and gases except for vacuum. For example, let's take an activity. Take a glass tumbler and place your cell phone inside it and ring it. The ring can be heard. Now surround the rim of the tumbler with your hands and try sucking out some of the air. We can see that the sound becomes fainter as you suck the air. Now, if you completely suck the air from the tumbler, you will not be able to listen any sound. So from this we can say that sound needs a medium to travel and sound cannot travel in vacuum. Now let's see how the sound travels through solid liquids and gases based on certain examples. So the first one is air. Sound can travel through air. For example, when a dog barks, the sound it travels through, through air and we are able to hear it. Similar is the case when two people trying to talk. The medium is air. So sound, it needs a medium. Now let's see how sound propagates through liquids. So in order to understand that, let's take a small activity. Take a bucket or a bathtub and fill it with clean water. Now take a small bell in one hand and shake this bell inside the water to produce sound. Now place your ear over the surface of the water. Can we hear the sound of the ringing bell? Yes, we will be able to hear the sound of the ringing bell. Hence from this activity, we can prove that sound can travel through water. Similarly, the whales and the dolphins, they communicate with each other in water uh, as well. So from that also we can say that sound can travel through liquids. So we saw that the sound can travel through liquids and gases. Now let's see how sound can travel through solids. So if we take the first example, here, if we try scratching one end of the table and if we place our ear at the other end of the table, we can hear the scratching sound. Similarly, while knocking a door, it can be heard from any part of the room. So from all this, we can say that sound can travel through any solid. So from these three slides, we can understand that the vibrating objects, they produce sound and it is carried in all directions in a medium. And the medium could be gas, liquid or solid. Now the last topic of this video is how we can hear sound. We can hear sound through our ears. Now the ear consists of three parts, an outer ear, a middle ear and the inner ear. Now the shape of the outer part of the ear is like a funnel. And at the end of the funnel, there is a thin membrane called as eardrum. Now when the sound enters it, it travels down through the canal to reach the eardrum. Now the ear drum is like a stretched rubber sheet. Now when there is sound, the sound vibration, it makes the ear drum vibrate. See here in this image, we can see that when the sound enters, it makes the ear drum vibrate. And then the ear drum, it sends the vibration to the inner ear. And from the inner ear, the signal goes to the brain and thus we are able to hear. So that's all for part one. In the next video will be on part two. In part 2, we will have a detailed lecture about sound waves, the amplitude, the time period and the frequency of a vibration.
Then we'll also deal about audible and inaudible sound as well as noise and music and finally noise pollution. So tune in soon for the next session. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe if you find the contents useful. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Take care and bye-bye.